What's going on guys? Welcome back to Wannabe Tuners, where we play around and try to go fast. My name is Eric, and in today's video, we're going to be doing episode three of ECU tuning. We're going to be discussing a topic called boost pressure. If you've never heard of boost pressure, you're in for a ride. Throughout this series, you know, I'm going to be making videos and there's going to be a lot of me talking going on and just a lot of information sharing that I've come to realize over the years of learning how to tune my 2009 Mazda Speed 3, which is a turbocharged inline four front wheel drive hot hatch. When it comes to boost, the, the simplest way to understand boost is that it is a pressure, okay? It is a measurement of pressure, usually measured at the intake manifold using a manifold absolute pressure sensor. And that signal, that boost pressure signal gets sent to the ECU, and then you can monitor that's that boost pressure value using your Cobb access port or any other app that you might have to monitor boost. You can also use a boost gauge, right, to monitor boost, but basically, Usually the, the pressure, the boost pressure itself is usually measured within the intake manifold. Boost pressure is, is basically a buildup. It's a buildup of air. If the setup doesn't flow very well, you know, you've got restriction throughout the system, your boost pressure is going to increase because now you've got restriction, right? So boost pressure is essentially a measurement of restriction throughout the system. That is actually the super simplest way to look at it, right? If you think about what it would take, like if you imagine a small straw and a large pipe, right? If you, you the, the diameter between a large pipe and a small straw is quite different, right? If you're blowing air through a large pipe, there was no restriction there whatsoever. It was super simple to do it. But if I want to blow that same amount of air through the small, through the, the same amount of air that I blew through the big pipe through the small straw, I would have to blow harder. And what ends up happening? Right? Pressure starts to build inside my mouth. But in this case, pressure is starting to build between the turbocharger's outlet and the intake valves, the top of the intake valves. That is your boost pressure. Now, some people will say that the pressure between the intercooler and the turbo's outlet is going to be slightly higher than the pressure between the turbo, uh, between the intercooler's outlet to the intake valves because there's a slight pressure drop across the intercooler. That might be the case. I'm no expert on that. But if that's the case, either way, whatever, we're measuring the boost pressure number at the actual intake manifold. So in our, um, in our minds, whatever the pressure reading is in the intake manifold is what we're going off of. Now, how do we, how do we make more power then? So if we wanna increase the boost, what is that going to do? If we have a setup that is restrictive, for example, and our boost pressure is let's say 20 pounds of boost, and we're making let's say 300 horsepower, okay? If we wanna make more power now, we wanna make more than 300 horsepower, what do we have to do? Well, if we wanna make more power with boost, then we obviously have to increase the boost, right? But then eventually, you know, we're gonna hit a wall at some point, right? Let's say we get to like 30 PSI and we're like, we're not really making much more power because you've kind of reached the limits of, you know, the amount of flow that you can get through that setup. Now, if you've got a really good flowing setup with good flowing parts, like a good intake manifold, a good flowing exhaust manifold, a good flowing exhaust system, a good flowing turbocharger with a large turbine housing that flows well, good flowing intercooler, intercooler piping, intake manifold, all that kind of stuff, then your turbocharger is not going to have to work as hard to push that air through. Well, actually, I lied. Your turbocharger is still going to work hard because it's going to flow more air. It's going to push more air through that engine, but there's going to be less boost pressure buildup, so to speak, because it flows so well, it's just consuming the air and then expelling it through the exhaust more efficiently because the setup is very efficient and flows very well. So that's kind of the thing with boost. 
Um, a lot of people have this idea that just because the boost pressure number is high, the car must be making a lot of power. But I don't agree with that because if you got a restrictive setup, you can be running a lot of boost, but if you're not actually getting the actual amount of air and fuel into the engine because there's too much restriction and you're not able to get it out, then you're not really gonna be making that much power even though your boost pressure is high. If you look at, for example, the Honda K-Series engines, from what I've read, they flow very well. Those cylinder heads flow very well. They're able to make a lot of power with very minimal boost because there's minimal restriction in that system. So it's able to get the same amount of air in that it requires to make good power because you need air and fuel to make that power, right? So the other idea here too is with boost is what makes the setup restrictive? I mean, a lot of times just opening up the exhaust system is gonna be a huge benefit because for example, if you're getting a certain amount of air in, right? But your exhaust is so restrictive that you can't get the air out, then there's gonna be residual air exhaust inside the cylinders taking up space. So on the next intake stroke, it's gonna be hard to replenish, to refill that cylinder because now you still got remaining exhaust gases in there on the way up, it can't get it out, right? So you gotta make sure that the whole setup flows the best, okay? The goal here, in my opinion, is not how much boost you wanna run. Like, it's not like, okay, let's increase the boost and make more power. The goal should be, how can I make the setup flow better, right? Try to get the setup to flow as much as you can and then let boost be the cherry on top, okay? So hopefully that makes sense, guys. If you've got any other questions in regards to boost, drop a comment. Um, stay tuned for episode four. We're going to be doing a quick introduction on ignition timing. Um, I really hope that this video was helpful to you guys. I uh, have a hard time explaining things sometimes, but if you've got any questions, let me know. This took me a while to like learn all this stuff. That's why I'm making a series of videos. And at some point throughout this series, we're actually gonna take a look at the tuning software, um, but we gotta get through a couple more topics here first. And um, yeah, you know, so basically boost is just a measurement of restriction through the system. It's a buildup, a pressure buildup of air that could not enter and exit the cylinders. Uh, so the goal here is not to increase boost right away. It's more so get the setup to flow as best as it can and then start turning your boost up based on those efficient flow mods, if that makes sense. So thanks for watching guys. See you in the next episode.